Welcome to Responsibility and Courage, Part 6 of this 12-part Wisdom Series. These teaching programs are made possible by your own world books, publishers of the Colbrin Bible and God's Child Covenant by Marshall Masters. Please feel free to share complete and unedited copies of these programs with others. For more information, visit virtualserenity.com. In the confusion and chaos that will surely come in the troubled days ahead, finding our way and leading others to safety becomes a paramount concern. Instinct, more than maps, will be the principal guidance mechanism, which is why we must be able to combine all that we have learned in the form of an inner compass. A compass fabricated from awareness, preparedness, knowledge, and integrity. Integrity is the magical force that keeps our inner compass working in the worst of times. Like the magnetic pull of the Earth's North Pole, it is an unseen yet powerful force. Without it, the needle swings in any direction it pleases, and to whatever urge seems most convenient. With integrity comes great responsibility, for there is never a point at which you can afford to stop learning nor can you delay action because you feel as though you haven't learned enough. In this teaching, the Elohim gather together all the thoughts and ideas discussed so far and show you how they can become the functional parts of your own inner compass, one that can and will lead you through the difficult years ahead with a compassionate wisdom as it guides you to a brighter future. Today we will continue our conversation on the term awareness. Having awareness means taking responsibility. Having awareness means to do a healing. It means healing in general. And we shall be speaking of that more fully in a moment. We also spoke to you last time of help and assistance with becoming even more deeply aware and today we shall also speak to you more in depth on that. We will begin with the responsibility of awareness. There are still many of you that we shall term light workers that have the awareness of the change of the ascension of the vibrational shifts that are upon it and strengthening even more as the times ahead quickly move forward towards us. We would tell you now is not the time for you to sit back and do nothing. Now is the time for you to stand up and to share what you know. Many of you think you do not know enough to communicate with others. And we say to you, oh, but you do. You must. You must communicate. And we understand that all will be in agreement. That is not what matters. What matters is that you begin the process of doing, of taking responsibility for your knowingness by sharing 
for we are in the process of creating a grand new world and we cannot do that by being hesitant. The responsibility lies upon you each as individuals. We spoke to you last time of how to create some of the awareness on a deeper level. We spoke to you of much help and assistance. So we will begin by advising those of you who have not or do not meditate to make this a daily ritual, a daily practice. Every single day, learn to become attuned with the energy ship around you. It can be as simple as feeling the change with weather pattern as they enter into your geographic area. Understanding when barometric pressures change, when fronts move in and move out, the feeling of rain before it gets here. Let your body become physically and consciously aware of those changes. Feeling the grass underneath your feet is being aware, but a deeper level of awareness would be to understand and to feel and sense the grass alive under your feet and its root system as it is routed into Mother Earth. To walk to a tree and hear its story clearly and succinctly, that is a deeper level of awareness. You may get there by deep level meditation. Then we will go to the next aspect of this, which is our healing aspect. This is all part of the awareness. When we say healing, we do not envision you as broken or needing to be fixed. We envision it as you becoming more than what you are. Living in this third dimensional reality as a human being has wore heavily on many of you who are listening. Its trials, its tribulations, all of those socio-political, environmentally programmed issues, challenges, negativities that have been with you since you incarnated here on this earth plane. They still are there. There will be no room for those kind of restrictions as we continue with these earth changes and beyond 2012. So when we speak to you of healing, we use it as a general term to let go of those things, of those programs, of your environment, of what you think is truth. Stand in neutrality. Let go of the programming. When you do, your world will become clearer. You will see things very differently from very different perspectives. It will be much clearer, less cluttered, and it will resonate with you. For once you do this work, you will be better prepared going into and beyond 2012. So as a general recap for today's visit with you, awareness, taking responsibility, getting the help and assistance for deep meditation daily in your ritual, and do the healing work on yourself and on others by letting go of that which has been restrictive for each and every one of you. Get up now 
and take responsibility. For we need you, you need each other. We are all as one. Until we meet again. We often dwell upon our imperfections to a point of inertia. However, we are nonetheless a magnificent species capable of much wisdom, love, and spiritual attainment. Many view themselves as being unworthy of this potential, one given to us by the Creator. However, a courageous few do possess the courage to achieve it, and that is good. In this great cataclysm to come, those who think of themselves as flawed and imperfect will possess all the excuses they need to lay down their lives. In doing so, they will serve a purpose that in those days will become self-evident. However, those who cherish the inner potential of our species will have no need for such excuses. Like careful gardeners, they'll nurture the rose of humanity through desperate times and live to witness it blossom to its full potential. Yet, every rose has its thorns. So do we cast it aside because it pricks our fingers, or do we handle it gently as we revel in its natural beauty? As you consider this question, remember that the Creator designed the rose with all its thorny imperfections, not through judgment, but with love. We too were created in the same manner as the humble rose, and what makes us grow is not the judgment of others, but the light and love of our Creator. Our imperfections and perfections too, all there by the hand of the Creator and to a wisdom we will fully understand and appreciate in the light of a new world. It will be an evolved reality where we shed our thorns once and for all. Therefore, the sting we feel today when we embrace loved ones with the prospect of future reality is indeed a thorny experience, one that tasks any light worker's integrity. In the next teaching, we will come to understand how integrity helps to keep us grounded and safe when the chaotic emotions of others begin to swirl about us. These teaching programs are made possible by your own world books, publishers of the Colbrin Bible and God's Child Covenant by Marshall Masters. The Colbrin Bible is a two-part wisdom text. This secular anthology offers the wisdom of hundreds of ancient authors and the many harbinger signs of their prophecies are now converging on 2012. God's Child Covenant is a romantic action drama set against a global tribulation. It offers a realistic yet hopeful vision for the future because 2012 will be less about what is in your bunker and more about what is in your heart. A printed transcript of this entire teaching series is available. For more information, visit virtualserenity.com.